Number four, balance the equations below, assuming they occur in an acidic solution. And then we have this equation. So we have aluminum, Al, plus Cr2072 minus yields Al3 plus plus Cr3 plus. Okay, so this is not a normal balancing equation because we want to balance it in specifically an acidic solution. Whenever they say that we need to balance an equation in either an acidic solution or a basic solution, we got to go by the rules, which I wrote down here for you guys. Now, there are a lot. There are eight rules, basically eight steps. But the thing is, is that if you follow these steps, one through eight, and every single time that they say balance in an acidic solution, I can guarantee you that you will get the right answer if we do the steps correctly. The, the idea here is that it doesn't matter what they throw at you. If you have these steps down and you get to it with whatever problem you have in front of you, you will get the right answer. So let's start. The first thing that we have to do for balancing it in acidic solutions is you got to break the full equation that they gave you into two half reactions. Now, it's nothing more than just looking and saying, well, I have an aluminum here and I have an aluminum here. Like goes with like. So aluminum is going to hook up with the aluminum. That's one half equation. And then the other one, okay, I got a, I got a chromium here, CR, and I got a chromium in this compound as well. So they go together. All you want to do at this stage is just find the matching elements and just rewrite it. So it doesn't matter which, you know, which half reaction goes on the top or the bottom. I guess I'll put aluminum first. So we'll say Al yields Al3+. plus. That's one. And then I have the, the dichromate Cr207, 2 minus, yields Cr3+. Plus. Let's just balance this out, give it some space. And now step one's already done. Look how easy that was. Now we're on to step two. So for step two, we need to balance all the elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. So at this stage of the game, we're not looking at hydrogen and oxygen. We're just looking at all the other elements and trying to balance them. And as we work through these steps, make sure that you do step two for both steps, then go to step three do it for both steps, then go to step four, do it for both steps. The idea here is that don't go through one through eight for here and then one through eight for this one. Try to do everything together. So I'm looking at aluminum. There's only one aluminum and one aluminum. So this one's actually balanced. In some cases, we might actually skip steps. So the aluminum's balanced, but on this one, I have two chromiums, right? There's a two here. And on the left side, I only have one chromium, so I have to balance it. At this stage, you're only allowed to use coefficients. So since you want two chromiums, I have to put a two in front of here. And now step two is done. So we're on our way. The next step is we're now going to focus on oxygen. We've got to balance the oxygen by adding H2O. So the rule here is that if you are looking for one oxygen, you will balance it by adding one H2O. So the rule is, is that if you need two oxygens, you'll add two H2Os. Three oxygens, you'll add three H2Os, et cetera, et cetera. But now if I look at the top one, I have no oxygen on the left. I have no oxygen on the right. So I'm skipping it. Easy as that. But when I look down here, I see that I have seven oxygen and no oxygen. So I have to balance it. I, I know that I have to add it in terms of H2O, but now how many? Well, I needed seven, so seven. Easy as that. And now that step's done. We're almost halfway there. The next step is always now go for the hydrogens. Keep in mind that oxygen always goes before hydrogen. So now we're balancing the hydrogen by adding H plus. Don't forget to, to add that H plus in there, the plus sign. And the rules are kind of the same. If you're looking for one hydrogen, you're going to add it in terms of one H plus. So if you need two hydrogen, 
you'll need two H pluses. If you're adding three hydrogens, you'll add three H pluses, et cetera, et cetera. No hydrogen on the left, no hydrogen on the right, so I skip it. No hydrogen on the left, but now when I look at this one, I see that I have seven times two. That's a total of 14 hydrogens. So I know that I have to add hydrogens on this side. How many of them? 14. Don't get scared by how many you're adding. Just follow the rules and just trust the process. So 14, eh, whatever, that's what it said. Seven times two, 14 hydrogens. I need 14 hydrogens on this side and halfway there. Now, since all the elements are balanced, we're going to balance the electrons or try to start balancing them. So what we're going to do is we're going to add electrons, E minus, to the more positive side. So when we hit this step, what I like to do is I like to split these equations down the middle. Just makes me see that, you know, I'm not crossing over. I'm directly looking at the left side and the right side separately. So. When we add these electrons, we just have to find the total charges. Now, the good thing about these balancing and acidic solutions is that I don't care about what all the individual charges of every element is. All I care about is the charges in the upper right-hand corner. So let's start with this one. It just told me aluminum. There was no charge in the upper right-hand corner here, but there was a three plus over here. Whenever you don't see a charge, that always means zero. And no matter how many you have of aluminum, in this case we have one, zero times whatever is always going to be zero. So the overall charge for the left side is zero. And maybe I will just highlight that. On this side, I had a three plus charge. I only had one aluminum, so one times plus three is plus three. And now, here are my two charges. I always will add the electrons, E minus, to the more positive side. So I say to myself, okay, from a zero to a three, what's the more positive side? Well, it's a three. So I know that I'm gonna add electrons on the right side. And then you think in terms of bunny hops. How many bunny hops does it take to get from plus three to, to zero, right? They're three numbers away. So I have to add three electrons. Now we're gonna do the same for the bottom. I see that I have a plus charge here, okay? So I'll take that into consideration. I see that I have a negative two. I see that I have a plus three, and I don't see any charge in the upper right-hand corner for H2O, so that means zero. Now for this one, for plus one, I have 14 of them. So I have to times those together. 14 times plus one, is a plus 14. Over here, I have a negative two, and I only had one of them. So one times a negative two is a negative two. Literally, they're being added together, so I will add these two charges together. So plus 14 plus a negative two is a total charge of a negative, or negative, positive 12. And that's the charge that I'm gonna be looking at. Now we just have to do the same thing for the other side. There was a plus three, but now there's two of them. So two times a plus three is a plus six. There was zero here. Seven times zero is zero. Literally, you gotta add them together. So six plus zero. I'm going to put the overall here as a plus six, just so that we see the two numbers together. So which one is the more positive side, 12 or six? 12, obviously. So I know that I have to add electrons on this side, but how many? Well, to go from 12 down to six, I need six electrons, six values between them. So there you go. And number five is done. Now, just know that at number five, number five is a very special step because when you place your electrons, 
you can tell which one out of the equation is the reductant or the oxidant, which one is the reducing agent or which one's the oxidizing agent. So let's just quickly go over that because I know some teachers or professors love that question. And it's, it's nothing harder than looking where your placement is for your electrons. If you've noticed, one equation has the electrons on the left side, and one of them has the electrons, did I say equations? One of them has the electrons on the right side, and one of them has the electrons on the left side of the equation. Keep in mind that if you do spot out that you have electrons on the same side, go back. Something happened. They should always be on the, on the opposite side. So that's kind of like a, a checkpoint, per se. But now, when we go back to visiting Leo the Lion says Gur, right? Loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. We can tell which one is the oxidant and which one is the reductant or the reducing agent versus the oxidizing agent. They mean the same exact thing by looking at where the placement is of those electrons. Whenever you have electrons on the right side, that's always the reducing agent or the oxidant. Vice versa, if you ever see electrons on the left side, that's oxidizing agent or the reductant. So in this case, since we have three electrons, it doesn't matter how many, but since I have the electrons on my uh, right side here, that follows with this, and that is the oxidant or the reducing agent. Just know that only your two starting materials is the oxidant and the reductant, never your products. So on a multiple choice, if they ask for reducing agents or oxidizing agents or oxidants and reductants, and they give you A, B, C, and D, these will never be the answers. They're throwaways. Get rid of them. It's only down to your two reactants. So you got like a 50-50 shot. But anyway, since this matches up with the oxidant, we know that the aluminum, because that's where it started from, the aluminum is the oxidant. And then just by default, the other one has to be the reductant, but you can kind of see that because the electrons are on the left side and who you started off with was the Cr2O7 2 minus. Cr2O7 2 minus. That's the reductant. And that's like a good little side step to do. Okay. Now let's continue on. <laughs> Step six, we now have to take those electrons and we just have to balance them, right? Because in a general balanced equation, we never see the electrons because they're canceled out. They have to be the same. In this case, they're not the same starting off. I have three electrons here and I have six electrons here. You can only balance by multiplying. So always bring the lower number up. But I can take a three and times it by something to get to six. Three times two is six. So maybe what I'll do is I will actually, um, let's see. Let's see if Christina can, uh, let's see, do her, her. Oh, nice. Okay. So actually I should have brought down the, these as well. Isn't this fun? I'm, I'm having a blast. I hope you are too. There you go. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this top equation and times it by two, right? But you got to be fair. Whatever you times by two, you got to do it to everybody. So times by two with the aluminum, with the aluminum three plus and the electrons. So now you have two aluminum because originally you had only one. And that yields two Al3 plus. And then you have the six electrons. And once you make a new equation, this one is donezo. Goodbye. Never to be seen again. So now you're just dealing with this equation and the one that you have on the bottom. Now they're balanced. Six electrons and six electrons. So step 
six is done. We're almost there. Step seven is to just cancel like substances out. Basically, you're just trying to simplify. And you're always going to cancel like substances on opposite sides. So the six electrons and the six electrons. Bye-bye. See ya. Uh, can we cancel anything else out? Not that I see. So step seven is done. And now you take the rest, the remnants of what's left over, and you add them together and you put them into one whole equation. So anything that's on this side of the dotted line is going on one equation. Anything on this side of the dotted line is going on the other side of the equation. Doesn't matter who starts first. So maybe I'll just put the 2AL. Usually the, usually the H pluses go first, but it, it doesn't really matter. So we'll say 2AL plus 14 H plus plus Cr2O7, 2 minus, yields 2Al3 plus, plus 2Cr3 plus, plus 7 H2Os. And let's just center this and call it, call it a question, because this one is done. Once again, what, what happened there? Once again, if you just run through these steps, it doesn't matter what acidic solution they put in your way, you will get the correct answer because the steps are always going to be the same. And that's it. Thank you so much for reviewing the video. I really hope this helped. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Um, we're almost at 30,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. It's nuts. And let's just keep working hard. On our end, we almost have 5,000 videos for you guys. We have physics chem and math videos out at the moment uh, with more subjects coming your way. So always, you know, check back on the channel just to see what we can help you with. And I really hope we're giving you great educational content. Keep, uh, keep working hard. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.